this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com. And in this video, I'm going to be teaching you all about changing colors when you're working in corner to corner crochet. Here you can see the llama and cactus corner to corner graph can that is a free pattern on mooglyblog.com. And you can also see there are a lot of color changes involved in this. Rather than teaching you this specific pattern, I want to teach you all the different methods I use when I change colors to give you really nice clean color changes and so that you can work any of the graph can patterns that are out there, whether they're complicated pictures like this or even just simple stripes. These color changes will apply to any corner to corner pattern you wanna make with multiple color changes. Now for this demonstration, I will be using Red Heart with Love and a USK hook as that's what I used here in this pattern. But of course you should use whatever your pattern calls for. I do wanna point out that in this video, I won't be teaching you how to corner to corner crochet. I do already have a video for that on the Moogly YouTube channel. I also have a video on how to make butterfly bobbins, which you'll be seeing here shortly. Again, already on the Moogly YouTube channel. If you follow the link in the description, you'll be able to find both right and left-handed video tutorials for the color changes. And I have also linked to the tutorials for corner to corner, for the blanket you see here, and for the butterfly bobbins, and how to read corner to corner instructions. So please do check that out. Now let's go ahead and get started. Before I do that though, I wanna point out you may have spotted one other tool here. This is what I like to use to help control my bobbins while I'm working with them. Simple office supply binder clips. There are lots of other tools out there to handle bobbins for tapestry or graph gan work, but this is what I like to do, so that's how I'm going to be demoing it today. Let's go ahead and get started now. Okay, so here I have a swatch of corner to corner that I've been working on, and I have come to the end of a row. You can see here, we're still increasing, but these color changing techniques, it doesn't matter if you're increasing, working even, decreasing, they're essentially going to be the same. Now, let's say I have finished completely with this color. We're gonna run through a few different scenarios here, but this is our first one. Let's say um, we're just making simple stripes, or maybe this is just where, you know, we've got this big chunk and now it's time to change color. And let's say for an example that we are completely done with this color. We're going to cut it. We don't need it to come back in later in this row. For now, for this one, we're going to say we're all done with it. So what I would go ahead and do at this point is go ahead and cut that yarn. Of course, always leave a good six inches for weaving in your ends. And then I would go ahead and finish this off. Some people like to pull that tail through. Some people like to just pull up straight and then weave in that end. Totally up to you, just to make it a little bit easier to work into for now. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that off like so, just to hold that down nice and firm. Now, from here, let's go ahead and pick up one of these butterfly bobbins that I have left over from when I made the um, llama and cactus graph gan. Now, again, I do have a separate tutorial on mooglyblog.com about how to make these. And when I have particularly small sections of yarn, I will definitely use these. If I know it's gonna be a real big section, like if I'm just making simple stripes, I might go ahead and just work right off that next skein. But for this, we're going to go ahead and use our butterfly bobbin. So what I need to do here is find the end real quick, hopefully, that is sticking out here. Let's see, that's the outside edge. So that must be, yes, this is our, this is our pulling string here. So what I would do here to go ahead and start the next color is just go ahead and slip stitch in that last stitch you made. And then you can continue on with your pattern. Chain six, two, three, four, five, six, and then make your blocks as usual. So I'll go ahead and make a block here. Now I could have finished off the last stitch of the previous block with my new color and then you continued on that way, but I just like to cut it off right there and start a little bit fresher when I'm doing a color change right along the edge. You can play with whatever version works best for you. Let's see here, get in that last chain, pull up a little bit more yarn, and I will turn my work, pull these out of the way a little bit here, and I am ready to slip stitch into that chain three space. Again, if you're not familiar with how to corner to corner crochet, please do check out the separate tutorial on that. So from here, I would just continue on with this color for as long as was called for in the pattern. So let's go ahead and do one more block just to give ourselves some space here, something to anchor it down to. Once in a while, some of the patterns, you'll only do one block in a color before you change colors again, and that is okay too. So let's say our pattern called for two of these purple blocks right here. So we've got two purple blocks made. Now it's time to switch to, let's go ahead and grab another one here. What do we have? 
I don't want to use white. That's too hard to say. I've got a little ball of green. Balls are also good. If you don't want to use butterfly bobbins, you can use small balls or again, any of the bobbin tools available on the market. So let's say I need to switch to green for the next block. What I'm going to do is go with my hook into that chain three space. And then I will yarn over with my next color here. Let me find that end again. I always like to pull up a little. There we go. Leave at least six inches again so you can weave it in. And then we will yarn over and pull through with that green and then finish that slip stitch that anchors it down to that chain three space with our new color. From here, we can just sort of pull on that yarn and back to tighten it up a little bit. And I will tack that down here in just a minute. But first, I want to go ahead and get this going a little bit so it doesn't pull out on me. So I will go ahead and make a green block like so. One, two, and you can see here, you may have noticed I'm crocheting over that end. I don't like to do that for, you know, the whole pattern in terms of we instead of weaving it in, I would still weave that end and in eventually. Um, but for now, I just like the way that tacks it down really well and sort of holds it out of my way and makes it a little more stable until I do come back and weave it in. I also will say about the ends is that once I know which one's my right side and which one's my wrong side, I try and always just make sure those ends end up, end up on the wrong side. So that will help me visually always know too when I'm on the right and wrong side. So I've got my green block made. What I'm going to go ahead and do, I haven't slip stitched in here yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit for a minute because it's nice and stable. And this is where I'm going to take care of this purple guy because I don't want him flopping around. Once I get a bunch of bobbins going, they can really get tangled. So I will just go ahead and sort of wind that yarn back up till it's nice and close to my work, like so. And I know that on the next row, I don't wanna cut this because the next row, I wanna come back and add more purple. So what I will do is take one of my binder clips here, and it's a little bit easier with bigger ones. Some of my bigger ones seem to have gone missing. So the bigger ones you can get are a little bit easier. But then I just clip that butterfly bobbin right to that section of color so it's not flapping around, the strings aren't hanging out, and it's right there when I come back and need it again. So from there, I can continue with however many of this color of block the pattern calls for. Just go ahead, slip stitch to that next block and keep going, etc. So that is really um, while you're moving this direction, so to speak, when you're adding new yarns like that, that's as easy as it is. Just go ahead and finish that slip stitch in the next block with the next color. So when I would go in here, if I want to switch colors again to something else, perhaps a yellow, let's find a little yellow one here. This is a little guy, it looks like it, uh, oh, there it is. Still a functioning butterfly bobbin, good, good, good. All right, so let's say it's time to switch to yellow. Let's go ahead and pull that through. And we can finish our block there with that slip stitch. It's nice and anchored down now. And I can continue on crocheting with the yellow. Okay, so I've got some purple blocks, a couple green blocks, a couple yellow blocks. I would take, and now that you know I've moved on to the yellow a couple here, and normally I would pin this to the back here with my binder clip again. It does work on balls. It doesn't quite work as well as the butterfly bobbins. You kind of have to squish them there. But that would hold it in space. So you can see by doing that, the color is ready when I come back to it in the pattern. So let's go ahead and anchor this one down. I'm not going to continue adding more colors this way. I think we've seen how to do that. So let's talk about when you're coming back to those colors. So I'm going to say... This happens to be our edge and I'm ready to turn and come back the other direction. Now, if I didn't want any more yellows here, I wouldn't change colors here because then I would end up with the slip stitches for our final edge in a different color. So I want to make sure that before I finish off this yarn, I slip stitch back along our block until I get to that, whoops, there we are, till I get to that chain three space. And then that is where I would change colors again. So when you're on that final edge, you want to make sure that you finish off the slip stitching back along that block with the same color so you don't get the color change there where you don't need it. So let's go ahead and say, now I want to add some pink. So I will pull up a new color here. Go ahead and yarn over, pull that on through like so, and just go ahead and start my new block. Now let's change our mind again. We've decided not to be completely done with the yellow, but we need one pink block here, followed by another pink block for the next block. So let's not cut it off. Instead, what I'm going to do, let me pull that back out here, is I'm going to find that yellow end, which I haven't cut yet. 
I'm pull it, sorry, get back up on screen here. A lot going on. I'm going to pull that string, if I can find it with that hand. There we are. I'm going to go ahead and hold that along this chain three and crochet over it. So maybe I'll go ahead and let that pink one drop and just weave it in later. And I want to make sure that when I double crochet, I work over that yellow end. So basically it's kind of like tapestry crochet, if you're familiar with that, and that I'm bringing it along with me so that I can pick it up again when I need it. So we've got our one pink block. I know the next one's fumbling a little bit there. Sorry about that. There we go. Now I know the next one I'm going to make is yellow. So what I want to do now that the yellow is all the way over here, that's great, but I don't want it to come back into the pattern until I get up here and we've joined that next block. So as I finish that third double crochet, I want to sort of bring that yellow yarn. Let me make a little more space here. Bring that yellow yarn up with me. So I'll capture it inside the stitches here a little bit or rather inside the stitch, the yarn overs, when I make that last double crochet. However you like to do that. And that just brings it right up to the top or almost the top of the stitch so that then when I go into that next chain three space, I can go ahead and drop the pink. I have to get it anchored down with my, my uh, binder clip here soon. This is why we do it. <laughs> so we don't have to deal with those tangles. There we go. And then I would go ahead and like I say, finish that slip stitch with the yellow now, which is right up where I needed it. So we have avoided having to cut it there and add yet another set of ends to weave in. So that's how I like to do it. So let's go ahead and make another yellow block. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm done with this pink one. I'm had enough of the pink, just needed that one little pop of color. So let's go ahead and cut that one. Again, be sure to leave enough to weave in. And then we can come back up here and finish this yellow block with our double crochets. So there's two and three. And now let's say, let's see, what's the next one? The next one on here is green. So, and you can see it's a little different because it's hanging out here waiting for us. We need to bring it up here a little differently. So what I can do here, if I pull this yarn end out of the way here, say I want the next block to be green, I will sort of do the same thing again. I didn't have to crochet over it because it's already on this side of the block. But when I make that final crochet of this block, I will work that string into the yarn overs a little bit so that it comes up with me again. There we go. And then when I go to slip stitch into that green, I can set the yellow aside, yarn over with the green. It's now right up where I want it to be, like so. And I'm all set to continue with the green. So then I could go ahead and either cut the yellow or wind it up and clip it onto the back of my work here. There we are. So it's all ready if I need to come back and do some more yellow. So now I've got the greens, but let's say I'm going to go ahead and do one green block, but only one. And then I want to switch to the purple. So we're going to have to pull the purple over to us. So I'll demonstrate how to do that here. So I will go ahead and make this one green block. Okay, so I've got the green block made and I'm ready to slip stitch into this one. But now I want to work with the purple yarn. So how do I get the purple where I need it to be? I'm going to go ahead and unclip that bobbin pull up a little bit of yarn here there we go and then i'm simply going to go ahead and pull it to where i want it to be and this is probably the um, trickiest part but it really again saves so many ends to weave in you can do this over one block you can do it over several blocks if you want to it's a little bit more difficult i can show you that here in a minute but first let's do it for just one i'm going to yarn over and pull that through and you can see I've got enough yarn there that it goes all the way across this chain three space. And I will even put my finger in there in that chain three space just to make sure that I've pulled it all the way across and that it's not going to be too tight. So then I just tip that right on through to finish the slip stitch. Don't worry about that green till you've got this one, you know, well underway. 
And then I will use my fingers to just really hold that yarn out long so that it doesn't pull back as I start crocheting. And when I make that block, then I will go ahead and just crochet right over that bit of yarn that we pulled over with us. So let's see here, there's one, two, and I don't have to worry about bringing it up or anything. We're already working with it. So I've got that block made like so, and then I could just continue on from there with whatever other colors I needed. So let's go ahead and pull that one back out though. And let's say we didn't want any green blocks. We wanted to go straight from yellow to purple. Where is my end? There it is. So I'll go ahead and pull that one out like so. We're gonna come back here to the purple and we're gonna say for the sake of argument, for the sake of this pattern, that we are completely done with the green. So I'll go ahead and cut that green off and get it out of the way. Instead, I just wanna go straight to purple. So I'm gonna take that end again and you can do this over a couple blocks. The more blocks you add, the trickier it gets. So again, if you're just starting with this, um, give it some practice and some time and don't be afraid to pull it back out. I'm going to go into that chain three space like I normally would there to slip stitch, but this time I want to yarn over with the purple. So I'm going to pull that yarn all the way over there. Now, how do you judge how much yarn to pull through? This is where it's a little bit tricky. What we want to do is really stretch that out so that we know it's gonna be wide enough and I really, I will literally sort of hold it along. Okay, I need that there. I'm going to need that much there as I work up along the side. And then I will have that little bit there. If I can get my finger in there in that chain three space like so, then I can pull the excess back out a little bit, get my hook back in there and sort of just finagle it. It takes a few extra minutes, but if you don't like weaving in ends, this is a way, again, to avoid some more ends. So I just want to keep it a little bit loose there. I'm gonna go ahead and get those chain threes in there and then I can reevaluate. Did I leave enough yarn or is it a little tight? This one's a little tight, so let's pull through just a little bit more. Again, this is kind of, a, kind of an art to it. So we just sort of pull that through, give it a little more on that end, we just don't want it super loose. We chain three, sort of lock it in there and see. Okay, that looks like it's about right. We've got enough there to crochet over, enough to work up with, and enough to crochet over again. So now we can go ahead and start crocheting those blocks. Just try and keep that bit of purple there, or whatever color you're using, right along that chain three, so you crochet over it. And then as I crochet, oh, pull some more yarn out of this butterfly bobbin here. Looks like I got a little bit of a tangle. There we go. All right, so I've got two double crochets made there. I'm crocheting over that purple bit right there. So I will get that one made. And then I can have you worked this one into it or I can just leave it hanging there. I like to work it into it. So let's go ahead and pull that last one out again. I do a lot of frogging when I do these color changes, but again, I do find it worth it. So then I would just go ahead and sort of slip it right over my hook there, you can see, as I finish that stitch there. So maybe one more time just to really work it in there. From there, I can go into that next chain three space again, make sure I'm trapping that purple that excess purple that we're working over there. And from there, I'm ready to keep crocheting. All I have to do for this block is crochet over that end and it'll be like it never moved. And we'll have avoided, again, a couple more ends that we need to cut and weave in, like so. So there you have it. And that's how I would work over those ends. So that's how I do color changes in corner to corner crochet. This technique should work whether you're using the double crochet method, which I've demonstrated and used here in the Laman Cactus Blanket, or if you're using the half double crochet method of corner to corner crochet, or anytime you want to pull yarns back and forth like this. I use these color changing techniques in several of my patterns with lots of color changes, including um, one of the blankets I made for quick crochet for the home. So I hope this helps you out with your own color changes, no matter what corner to corner pattern you're following. If it doesn't, if you've still got questions left, please ask me in the comments, I'd be happy to help. Please give the Lama and Cactus blanket a try if you like corner to corner graph gans. 
Again, links to everything I've talked about here, including how to corner to corner crochet, the free written pattern, how to read corner to corner instructions. All that is at the link in the description. So please do, do go check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe to the Moogly YouTube channel so you're always notified when we have new videos or when I go live. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you.